Hey guys, Jackson here. Episode 2 of The Last of Us aired this week, and like with episode 1, expect to find a brief recap followed by my review of the episode. As always, this is your spoiler warning for anyone yet to watch the show or play the game. Episode 2 of The Last of Us starts in Indonesia in 2003, where the authorities show up and take a woman away called Ibu Ratna, a leading professor in mycology, otherwise known as the study of fungi. They arrive at a lab where they ask her to confirm what the specimen is. Ibu Ratna correctly identifies it as cordyceps, but is shocked to find out that the specimen is from a human tissue. Ibu Ratna is shown the dead human and the wound from where she was bitten, and her worst nightmares are confirmed when she sees the tendrils inside the dead human's mouth. Ibu is informed that Patient Zero is still at large, and the other women that were with the dead human were kept for monitoring, but had to be killed as cordyceps took hold of them. The officials ask her if she can make a vaccine or medicine to treat them, and she coldly tells them there is no cure and to bomb this city and everyone living here, whilst a tear runs down her cheek. We cut back to the present day where we find Joel, Ellie and Tess resting in a building. Joel and Tess remain suspicious of Ellie, begin to grill her as to why she is so important. Ellie caves and explains that Marlene's plan was to get Ellie to a team of Firefly doctors, as they believe Ellie could be the answer to finding a cure. As they move on we learn that most of the big cities were bombed, just like Ibu advised in the past to do in Indonesia, but sadly it had mixed results in curbing the spread of the infection. The state house is typically a 10 minute journey from where they are, and they are left with the conundrum, take the long route around which will be safer, or take the shortcut, which is likely to be more dangerous. They head to the nearby hotel and complete some reconnaissance, realising the long route around is actually filled with hundreds of infected that weren't there when Joe and Tess last did the route. During this moment, Ellie, as well as the audience, learn that the infected share a hive-like system where they are all connected through the cordyceps, and if they were to tread on a piece of cordyceps, it could alert all infected in the area of their presence. Joe and Tess cautiously agree that the shortcut through the museum is their best bet, and as they enter the museum, they find a fresh dead body that has different wounds to a typical infected attack. Joel and Tess give an ominous look at each other and tell Ellie that they need to move through the museum silently. As they progress, we begin to hear the haunting sound of the clicker, all too familiar to anyone that has played the game. Two clickers stand between Joel, Ellie and Tess and they exit to the Firefly Statehouse. Clickers are more advanced to your standard infected human as they have had cordyceps running through them for longer, allowing it time to evolve. This means that the clickers are harder to kill and more deadly. The only upside is that they are blind, and rely on their hypersensitive hearing. And after some very tense moments and the clickers being defeated, we learn that Ellie has been cut by the clickers and Tess has a twisted ankle. After some brief respite, Joe and Ellie share a moment, looking out to the statehouse in the distance from the roof of the museum, just like in the game. The group make it to the statehouse, where Joel goes forward and investigates the armoured trucks. After finding fresh corpses and blood, they realise that the group of fireflies may have fled inside the building. As they rush inside we find a literal bloodbath and learn that none of the fireflies they were hoping to meet have survived the attack. It seems in the TV adaptation that it wasn't Fedra involved in the death of the group, and instead it was the infected. Sadly a half-dead infected corpse sets off the hive mind, and the swarm of infected we saw earlier in the long route are alerted to their presence, and make their way to the state house. This is where we learn that Tess is actually infected herself, and it wasn't just a twisted ankle from their altercation with the clickers. Tess convinces Joel to leave with Ellie, as they compare wounds and we see that Ellie's has already started to heal, whilst Tess's has started to spread. Joel and Ellie escape the building while Tess plans to go out with a hero's ending, causing a huge explosion with the fuel and explosives in the building. Unfortunately for her, it takes a while to light the fuel and we witness one of the most gruesome kisses witnessed on TV, with the infected's tendrils going into her mouth before she successfully ignites the lighter and blows up the building. The episode ends with a literal bang as Joel and Ellie head off to find Bill and Frank. The second episode of The Last of Us continues to change parts of the story, which I'm sure will divide the fanbase, but just like last episode, I'm enjoying the majority of these changes and accept that a TV format cannot completely be like for like to the source material. I particularly like the reference that Ellie couldn't swim, and instead of Ellie relying on planks of wood etc to navigate the environment, they just reduced the level of flooding to waist high. The biggest highlight of the episode was the encounter with the clickers, with the sound design being fantastic. The overall aesthetic of the clickers, including the movement, were near identical to the game, and equally as terrifying, bringing back memories of suffering as soon as I heard that clicking noise. Unlike Joel, Ellie and Tess, I thankfully had some shivs to help me. I'm always a sucker for good lighting, and this didn't disappoint, looking gorgeous throughout the episode. The environmental design of the world was also true to the game and looked believable, 
with the building succumbing to nature and time. The opening flashback sequence in Indonesia added more intrigue and world building to the overarching story, but sadly at the detriment to the present day story, as we didn't have any dialogue between Joe and Ellie for at least 20 minutes. At present this could be my biggest gripe, as their relationship still feels bare bones in comparison to their game counterparts, but I'm confident this will continue to build at a quicker pace moving forward. After having reservations last episode about Anna Torf playing Tess, I'm pleased to say she gave a brilliant performance and gave us an emotional ending to her character. I'm continuing to enjoy Pedro Pascal's performance as Joel, and Bella Ramsey is definitely warming to me as Ellie, nailing some of her quirks in this episode and bringing some humour to a bleak world. The Last of Us delivered another solid episode of television, and although we sadly say goodbye to Tess, the journey continues for Joel and Ellie, and I can't wait to tune in next week. Final score, a solid 8 out of 10. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about episode 2, and the show as a whole. If you're new here then consider subscribing to my channel for regular TV, film and gaming content, including live streams. We're currently on the road to 50 subs, and thank you to anyone that has already subscribed to me. We had an influx of new subs over the weekend, and it means the absolute world to me, as we continue to grow this channel and community. And as always, I hope to see you next time.